We are seven weeks, four days, 14 hours, 23 minutes, and 51 seconds out of my natural men's physique show. I'm gonna take you through my entire day and everything that I've done to get from this to this, which I've done in a little bit over 10 weeks. We've still got about four kilograms of weight to lose. We've still got another seven weeks to go. Let's get it. Right lads, we woke up and we had the lowest weigh-in of the prep so far. I started at 93 kilograms. We're now weighing 85.1 kilos, which means we've lost over eight kilograms of pretty much all fat. In terms of performance in the gym, right, I'm starting to feel this diet now. Like this is the stage where it's probably not worth getting this lean for me. Ugh. Every morning, first thing I do is I eat one square of 85% dark chocolate. Even if you don't really like it, if you have a square of dark chocolate in the coffee, it will just fill you up, bro, for like a good few hours from this measly little square. First task of the day is we're gonna give the neighbors a show. My blinds are broken on these massive windows behind me. Today is a check-in day, so first thing we do is get some physique shots, send them over to my coach. This is how we're looking. This is probably the best that I've ever looked in my entire life, and uh, I'm pretty freaking proud of myself, bro, considering everything that's happened. The hardest thing about this is the posing, bro. It is so difficult. I'm getting coached for posing as well, but it's gotta be done. I've done one show before in the past, and my posing looked like I was some guy with like late stage Parkinson's shaking all over the stage. So we need to sort it out. Super excited, loving the process. Let's get it, boys. I'll take it from a day. Yeah! It's 10 or 9 a.m. First meal is about to go down. I do not fast, but I will offset the time that I eat my food. If I can wait a little bit until the day has started before eating my first meal of the day, it's basically gonna mean that I have more calories in a shorter amount of time. One thing about getting incredibly lean is you do appreciate food, like, Things taste better, they smell better. It's a beautiful thing, man. Macronutrient partitioning. It sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. What I'll do is I'll eat about four meals in a day. Meal number one and the final meal is gonna be higher in fat, lower in carb. So I'm gonna eat the majority of my carbohydrates in meal two and three around my training sessions. So I'll have high carbs around when I train, low fat around when I train. Then in the morning and evening, I'll have higher fat, lower carbs, and then protein stays consistent throughout the day. And then I'm currently eating these macros on a training day, these macros on a non-training day. So on the training days, we have more food because we're gonna be doing more. We need the energy to train. We wanna keep as much muscle as possible. On the non-training days, we're not gonna be training. So we don't need as much food, as much carbohydrates for our training sessions because we're not trying to train and keep the muscle so we can go into a bigger fat loss day on the non-training days. At the moment, because calories are so low, I also consume an incomprehensible amount of sugar-free drinks. If you've dieted before or lost weight, you'll know that at the start, you can lose weight pretty easily. Then the deeper you go, the harder it gets. And the reason it gets harder is because our actual amount of calories that we need day to day changes with every drop in weight. But every 10% reduction in weight, we get like a, a reduction in our resting metabolic rate and basal metabolic rate. I'll put the exact number here. Like you lose this many calories from every 10% reduction in weight. What that means is I actually started my diet on 3000 calories a day. And because of this metabolic adaptation where as we get lighter, as we get leaner, the amount of food we need to maintain our weight changes and it reduces, we need to reduce our calories or increase our output in order to keep that weight loss going on. That is why if you get super lean from a diet, it's so hard to maintain it. But because the amount of calories you need to eat every single day has changed, you need to like eat nothing and starve yourself in order to maintain that weight loss. Right, snacks. Rather than snacking on shit, eat fruit as a snack. I love eating high carb sugary shit, but around when I train. This is the most elite dieting cereal. In terms of calorie density, this massive overflowing bowl is only like 70, 80 grams versus something like granola, a bowl like this would be like 200 grams. So you can eat a load of them for fewer calories. This right here is the best tasting protein I've ever had in my entire life. All I need to do is get you to try this and it tastes so freaking good that you'll never want to go back to any other protein shake. Code MO if you want to get 10% off your order. They ship from Europe as well now and the US worldwide. Pre-workout meal, high in carbs, high in protein, low in fat. And then I'm going to eat another saw in as well, because I'm a fat cunt. I'm so addicted to caffeine right now that I feel like this doesn't even hit the size. Like, caffeine's also an appetite suppressant, though. Oh, absolutely beautiful, non-shit day. I absolutely love England. 
Right, one thing people don't tell you about losing a shit ton of weight is you get really, really cold. High intensity, every set is still failure. Flat cable press on chest right as well. If you want to grow it, what you want to focus on is driving your elbows together. Elbow conversion, it's like you're trying to squeeze your tits together. You want one of the greatest hats ever made, completely custom, and designed by myself. What gear? These are now live, along with the bucket hats, the ultimate grey summer vegetable dress hat. Its train intensity is going to determine whether you look good versus great at the end of a cut. If you like, don't train to play that you kind of fucking cruise through it. You're going to lose a lot of muscle, look pretty shit. But if you go all in on the sessions, even when you feel, even when you feel like you don't have any energy, at the end of it, you're probably going to retain most of the muscle. Most elite, a lateral doubt movement. Left to right, right to left. Hands in front of your dick. Up, pull second, and down. These are sick, because unlike dumbbells, you're training the full range of the muscle. One more shoulder exercise, two tractor exercises, and then we are done. Set these up, so your upper arm is running parallel to the path of the cable. Nice big stretch. I literally have nothing left in the tank at this stage. Final exercise, lads. Two sets. Overhead katana extensions. They're pretty funky tries of exercise. Uh. That was an absolute drag. Do you know normally when you feel hungry, you eat food and you're full? You get to a stage where you don't ever feel full. Rather than being hungry and feeling full when you eat, you go from feeling like you're gonna pass out and die to only being starving hungry. Like the other day I woke up at 1.30 a.m. at night and I just could not can get back to sleep, bro. Because I was like so hungry, my body just wanted to get up and go for food. I'm someone that used to binge eat a lot, struggle with diet, could never like adhere to a diet. I'd lose a bit of weight and then I'd binge eating it super fat and on this entire thing even though i've done it for 10 weeks so far i'm starving hungry i have not missed a single beat and the secret is is that it's about accepting that you're gonna be hungry it's like reframing it in your mind as that is a good thing that means that you're losing weight that means that you're losing fat and that is what you're gonna feel like the purpose of hunger is literally to stop you from losing fat because fat from a biological point of view is there to keep us alive it's about telling yourself right be a fucking masochist where you like like inflicting pain yourself you're like yes this is the feeling that it takes to reach my goals and it's like in the past i've always been like oh i wish i could have pizza i wish i could have this crying to myself about it but now like i know i can have those things i want to but i'm choosing not to have those things because in order to become the person that i want to be like i don't do that shit one thing that i've done different on this as well is rather than telling myself i can't have everything and being super super fucking meticulous about like every gram of rice and every single little singular calorie that doesn't actually really matter like bodybuilders do and they get an eating disorder on this what i've done is although i'm on like an extreme diet right now that isn't sustainable if i want to have like a square of chocolate and i want to try it i'll try it i'll taste it and be like wow this tastes really really nice but i'm choosing not to have it and then i won't eat anymore whereas in the past i'd be like oh i can't have that and i'd restrict absolutely everything and not even like entertain the idea of having it and then when i do finally have it I'm like oh no i've cheated on my diet and it spirals into some bodybuilding binge eating disorder so maybe i'm delusional but this is my theory how i'm not gonna get super fat post show <sighs> and now we eat a pathetically small amount of food another dieting hack that has absolutely zero zero nutritional value are these sugar-free jellies bro they actually taste pretty good these are from audi they're like <laughs> anyone else hate the sound of people eating or if someone eats their mouth open bro i just want to drop kick them in the face I was thinking the other day, it is incredibly easy to be fat. Like, there's so much hyper palatable, delicious food. But equally, 
it is the easiest time not to be fat as well. Like you get stuff with no calories in that tastes sweet, that is delicious. You literally got no excuse to be a fat lazy this is the quickest, most efficient, tastiest meal known to man. It takes 15 minutes to cook. Potatoes, chicken, air fryer, frozen veg, microwave. Potatoes are one of the most satiating foods you can get. So they fill you up with the smallest amount. Another tip that I've learned is if you're dieting in a big calorie deficit, make your food really spicy. If you don't know what to eat or you're struggling or you want some like new food ideas, I've got a cookbook which is currently $3 for the first 300 people. I released it a few days ago. It's already on like 200 sales. So there's only like 100 left before it goes up in price. But that is $3 right now if you want to grab it right this is where competing can get very sh because it's currently 10 p.m right i've been working non-stop since i've been back from the gym i've still got 3,000 steps to do and 40 minutes of cardio i'm going to quickly eat this do my cardio do a little bit more work and try and get to bed asleep before 12. i think i might be pregnant because we have the most random meal in the world we have two lean steak burgers with garlic chili and some texan barbecue rub pickled cabbage is actually really good and then pickled gherkins as well i wasn't eating any more microwave vegetables today Right now, I just want to sleep. I don't even want to eat. I definitely don't want to do cardio. But before cardio, boys, you know what time it is? Can't fucking wait for this one. Let's get it, boys. Do not touch these fucking handles. Ever. Like, don't give a shit. The other shit thing about doing so much cardio in my leg is that my leg has been fucked. Like, absolutely fucked for a minute. In terms of the surgery, it hasn't really done anything. It's not any worse, which is a good thing. But... If I'm doing like a lot of steps, cardio, which I'm doing 12,000 steps a day, four minutes cardio six times a week, the leg is pretty fucking shot at the minute. Sleep is one of the most important things, especially as a natty lifter, boys. When you sleep well, you recover better, you have less cravings, so you need to be getting eight hours of sleep a night. I'm gonna get about seven if I go to sleep very soon. So what I'm gonna do is take this, which is gonna put me into a deeper, better sleep quicker, and uh, you're like, Mo, what's in it? I'm pretty sure this is only on the US site, but you can probably order it to England because it has something called Gabarin, which is now a prescription-only medication in the UK. It's because it is so such a powerful relaxant and so powerful at making you like unwind and go to sleep. GABA is known for producing a calming effect. It's thought it has a major role controlling nerve cell hyperactivity associated with anxiety, stress, and fear. Taking up to 120 milligrams of GABA a day as a supplement for 12 weeks is un unlikely to cause any adverse effects. 120 milligrams is the absolute limit. Bruv, this has got 3,000 milligrams of gabarin. Nah, that can't. In conclusion, this study suggests that a low dose natural GABA, 75 milligrams, I've just consumed 40 times that. Nah, fuck it, I'm gonna have a good sleep tonight.